Hello and welcome to a, a short tutorial on circles. This is just a crash course on the basics. Um, so we know some of the key measurements of the circle. We, we know what their definitions are. So for instance, we have the, um, we have the diameter, this goes through the center. Um, we also have the radius, which is half the diameter, which goes just from the center to the circumference. Okay, they're the key things that we'll be using right now. So let's just um, label those. So we've got the diameter here. We usually just use D for short. And we've got the radius, uh, we'll use in pink, this is the radius. And actually, yeah, as I mentioned, two times the radius is the diameter. Now these relate directly to two of the most important measurements when we're working with circles. Uh, one of which is the outer length of the circle. Whoa, wobbly hand. <laughs> Try that one again. Um, the outer length of perimeter of the circle. Now in circle world, that's got a special name, which is exclusive to circles, which is the circumference. Okay. And the circumference um, is, I will write that again. I'm still getting used to my trackpad. Yeah. Uh, okay, the circumference. So conference is equal to pi multiplied by the diameter or pi times two of the radius. Okay, now we mathematicians like to be shorthand about this. We're quite lazy in that way. So circumference is pi d or circumference is two pi r. They're the two formulae that we tend to use, that we do use, okay? And depending on which information is given to you in a question, we can decide which one of those two to use. The other thing that we have, so we look at circumference, and we also look at area. Okay, and the area of a circle is pi times the radius, times the radius again. Again, there's a better way of writing that, which is pi times radius, we time something by itself, we square it, okay, or much better, I'll do it in pink as well, let's keep it, keep it nice and uh, uniform, um, what I can say is the area, oh, 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 area, not pi, area is pi r squared, there we go, pi times radius squared, okay, so they're the two of three formulae that we'll be using for this lesson today, the circumference and the area. So let's look at some examples and how we can put those into practice. So first of all, calculate the area and circumference of each of the circles. Now, circumference is pi d, so this is very straightforward, okay? Pi times the diameter. So in this case, it's pi times 10. And the circumference is going to be in centimeters. Okay, so we grab our calculator and um, we use the pi button and we times it by 10. And we get um, either 10 pi, we could leave it like that actually, if, it's, if we want it to be exact, or in this case, to, to three significant figures, we've got 31.4 centimeters to three significant figures, or alternatively to one decimal place. Okay. Now the area, the area we said is equal to pi r squared. Now in this question, we know the diameter only, but knowing the diameter, we know the link between the diameter and the radius is that the radius is half the diameter. So if the diameter is 10, then I'm sure you can tell me that the radius is equal to five. Okay, so this is going to be pi times five squared, 25 times pi. Um, which is equal to which is equal to seventy eight point five centimeters. Now I think it's the area, so it's not going to be centimeters. We're talking about area centimeters squared. Okay, again, it's two uh, two three centimeters. Okay, all nice and clear. I hope. Next question. Now this one, same question, but instead of being given the diameter, now we're just given the radius. So in terms of the circumference, uh, we can just use 2 pi r, or we could double it and find the diameter and do pi d, 
any in any case it gives you the same answer so let's just use this one um so this is going to be 8 pi which is equal to 25.1 centimeters and for area by r squared okay so the, the radius is really handy here so it just applies to two formulae got pi times 4 squared, or 16 pi, which equals 50.3, and then centimetres squared here. Two, three, two, three, six. Okay. And determine the area of the shaded part of each of the shapes. Now, now we're getting a bit more interesting. Okay, so we've got the main skills. We know how to do these, and we know what everything is. So... Um, we can now determine the area of the shaded part of each of the shapes. Now, first of all, let's just identify this as a compound shape. Okay, we've got a rectangle and a semicircle stuck on the side. So first of all, let's just have a look at uh, finding the area of this rectangle. That's nice and easy, isn't it, if we count carefully. So we've got six uh, squares this side, and three, six, nine, twelve, I think. I hope I'm right there. Twelve, double check, three, six... 9, 12, yes, okay. So 6 times 12 is 72. All right, now it doesn't give you any units, so we'll just leave it there for now. We'll put square units at the end. And in, the, in terms of the area of this semicircle, okay, let's have a look at finding the um, radius. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The radius is 6. Okay, so the area of this, if it was a full circle, would be pi times 6 squared, okay, if it were a full circle, that would be the area of that full circle with a radius of 6. But actually, we're not looking at a full circle, are we looking at a semicircle? So let's have a look, so um, 36 pi um, is that, and so what we would need to do, okay, to that answer is just look at half of it, looking at half of it only, this would be 36 pi divided by 2. Okay, hope that's okay. Um, and so we get 18 pi, which is 56.5. So three significant figures. Okay, well, I'll keep it exact in the middle of the calculation here. And so the area is going to be 72 plus it's 36 divided by 2 pi, 18 pi, or 56.548. So just add on the 72 again to that last answer, and we get an answer of 128.548. So if we're going to round it, say, to the nearest whole number of three significant figures, 129 square units. Oh dear, let's do that. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's look at the second one, last one. Okay, now this one, we need to find the area of the shaded parts of each of the shapes. So let's look at what we've got. We've got a rectangle and they've cut out a circle. Okay, so hopefully you've got a good idea about what to do in this instance. So we've got 10, I think, across the top for the rectangle. The width of it, and then uh, sorry, the length of it, and the width, three, six, seven, eight. So I think, by my reckoning, by my counting, my counting skills good. Yep. Yeah, so I think the area of the area of the rectangle is eight times ten, or eighty, and then the area of the circle. Okay, so what we've we got here is that the radius being 2 so it's pi times 2 squared, which is 4 pi, which is about 12.6. Okay, and then what do we need to do? I think let's get that out. Let's try that again, underline it. So what do we need to do to find the area of the shaded part? Well, we take the area of the rectangle and subtract, surely, the area of the circle, because we're taking out the area of the circle is not shaded. So it's going to be 80 minus 4 pi 
or 12.56. Um, so take away, so 80, subtract that last answer. And then it equals, oops, 80, I'll get there. <laughs> you probably got there way before me. Um, 80 minus 4 pi, which equals 67.4 to three significant figures. 67.4 square units to three significant figures. Okay, hopefully that's nice and clear. Um, apologies about some of my handwriting, I'm just looking at that, shocking. Okay, hopefully that's nice and we'll be happy to get on with some, some work on that now. Okay, good luck.